You're watching Color 10 News at 6. Thanks for joining us. Happening now, Aurora residents and area firefighters are remembering the life of Cadence Harris, a 17-year-old who was one of four people killed Saturday in a crash involving multiple motorcycles. Her visitation is taking place this evening ahead of a funeral tomorrow. Color 10 Cindy Moran is live in Aurora tonight, sharing what Harris meant to her firefighter community. Well, Harris trained with the Aurora Fire Department as part of a program with Aurora High School. That's why you're going to find fire department trucks here at Aurora Baptist Temple, as Harris will receive full firefighter honors tonight here at the visitation and tomorrow after funeral services. We set the truck out and put the uh, morning bunting on it and her gear. Outside the Aurora City Fire Department, flowers in firefighter gear blow in the wind, serving as a memorial for Cadence Harris. She was one of us. She was one of the family. She's going to be missed. Harris was part of the Explorer program, a partnership between Aurora High School and AFD to train teens to become firefighters. She was very enthusiastic about doing uh, firefighter stuff. I mean, it was not... Uh, she never said no to operating the aerial ladder or uh, loading the hoses up in the hose beds. Hurd says Harris spent many hours training, but her budding career has been cut short. It's a tragic that did not need to happen. It's, it's a sad day uh, when, you, when you lose any firefighter, a, a young one that, that had the whole future in front of them. Ebenezer Fire Protection District is covering for AFD during the funeral services. Over a year ago, the district lost Dustin Brandhorst, a volunteer looking to become a full-time firefighter. So it's sad to lose these um, folks that are here wanting to help their community and, and uh, just uh, getting up to that point and then, and then something tragic happens, yeah. The love for Harris continues to grow with people sending out flowers and notes at the crash site and fire station and others showing up to pay their respects to a fellow first responder. There is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, firefighters from all over are going to be here to honor her even though they didn't know her. That love continues to grow here outside Aurora Baptist Temple as the parking lot is packed with people visiting Harris tonight. Aurora FD says if any other departments want to participate following the funeral service tomorrow, go ahead and call AFD. Reporting in Aurora, Sydney Moran, Ozarks First. Now to our first look at weather, a summery day in both temperature and feel. There have been some hit, but mostly mist storms popping up late this afternoon that should not interfere with outdoor plants tonight. Don't take my word for it. Jamie Warner is here. He's always here. But uh, a warm day today yeah. should be a warm evening, but pleasant enough to get outside yeah. and do what you need. Uh, pleasant enough to get outside. Man, you got to cut the grass. And, and you hit on the warmth. Uh, today was the warmest day so far this year in Springfield, hitting 89 degrees. Of course, we're hoping for some wet weather. And there's been a little bit nearby here in the Springfield area, but so far it's kind of stayed out of town. Uh, looking at radar right now, we've got a, a cluster of showers starting to fade now uh, from Lake of the Ozarks south down across eastern Camden County. We've got another cluster of showers here between Baxter County and Fulton County and north central Arkansas. Everything tracking generally from north to south. Uh, I know typically the, the pattern has been for this activity to just sort of fade away in the evening and then we're done. Uh, but I think with this front moving into the area, there will be a risk that we could find some pop up showers and thunderstorms on and off throughout the night tonight and into the morning hours. Currently 82 in Springfield, but cooler off to the east. Here's a look at our forecast overnight tonight. Again, a spotty shower storm risk, I think, through sunset. And then we'll probably see a lull in rain chances, and then they may perk up again closer to sunrise. Uh, temperatures tonight, not as cool as the past few nights, dropping into the mid-60s. Uh, we do have multiple opportunities at more widespread rain. This is great news for the area. We'll outline that in your forecast coming up. Bailey? All right, Jamie. A victim has been identified in Monday's fatal shooting in Polk County. According to authorities, Philip Thompson was shot and killed by his roommate, Shane Elzey. On Monday, Polk County deputies say Thompson's brother called 911, reporting Thompson had been killed. His body was found that night in a barn with a gunshot wound. Uh, deputies say Elzey fled in Thompson's truck. He was found and arrested in Louisiana last night after detectives used license plate readers to track where he was going. A crash two miles north of Seymour leaves a baby dead and two others injured. 
The highway patrol says that baby and the two others were ejected from an Amish buggy after another vehicle rear ended that buggy. All three were taken to the hospital where the baby died. The two injured have been identified as 23 year old Sammy Schwartz and 24 year old Barbara Schwartz. Troopers say 52 people have died this year in crashes on crashes rather in southwest Missouri highways. Today marks 31 years since the Springfield three went missing and that case remains unsolved. The families of Stacy McCall, Susie Streeter and Cheryl Levitt are still hoping to one day learn what happened on this day back in 1992. You can head to OzarksFirst.com to learn more about the Springfield three and their disappearance. An Ozarks, an Arkansas woman rather, is charged with an, uh, with murder after authorities say she shot her son over an argument about a lawnmower. According to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, 43 year old Tabitha Pebbler called 911 and said she shot her son. Pebbler told deputies she and her son, Brandon Crisco, got into an argument about a stuck mower when Crisco shoved her. Pebbler then went and got and went to her car to get a gun. She told deputies she fired warning shots at Crisco as he approached her, but accidentally hit him in the chest, killing him. Another woman in Fulton County, Arkansas, is charged with murder after deputies say she shot a man in the back last week. The body of David Sutherland was found with injuries, including a gunshot wound and barbed wire around his neck. A neighbor told authorities they had last seen Sutherland leaving with a friend, Stacy Hickman. His vehicle was also reported stolen, and police say Hickman was later found with that vehicle in Salem. After her arrest, police say Hickman confessed to the murder, said she was trying to get some land that was originally supposed to be hers. Missourians with marijuana misdemeanors on their record should have them automatically expunged by tomorrow. It's due to the passing of Amendment 3 back in November, but some circuit clerks around the state may have trouble meeting the constitutional deadline. That's because older cases are only accessible through physical paper records, meaning each one has to be processed by hand. More than 44,000 misdemeanor cases have already been expunged in Missouri ahead of tomorrow's June 8th deadline. The deadline to expunge felony cases is December 8th. More than 10,000 of those have been expunged so far. A new contender has entered the race for the U.S. Senate seat held by Josh Hawley. St. Louis County prosecuting, prosecuting attorney Wesley Bell announcing today he is running for the Senate in 2024. The Democrat released a video announcement where he said, quote, we need leaders who try to help, unlike Josh Hawley, who's in a rush to be famous. Bell is a St. Louis native. He will be opposed on the Democratic side by Lucas Kuntz in next August primary. Coming up, rising costs of car insurance, forcing drivers to pay more. But up next, we have some helpful tips that could save you real money. Let's take a live look outside first. Another dry day for most of us. A better chance for widespread rain ramps up as we look ahead to the weekend. We're back with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner after the break. The Outdoor Forecast is sponsored by Don Vance Auto Group. Upfront pricing, down home service. Tonight on America's fastest growing cable news network. No topic is off limits when the one and only Bill O'Reilly sits down with Chris. They're taking your calls tonight on Cuomo. Then Banfield talks to the man behind the X-Files on the new UFO revelations. Could there be more encounters that we know nothing about? To find News Nation, go to joinnn.com.